Hi everybody, my name is Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel, and we thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. We are working on our Law, Statutes, and Commandments of Messiah Yahushua. And gentlemen, who is Messiah Yahushua? Messiah Yahushua is, people know him as Jesus, if you've never heard his Hebrew name, his original name, his true name. He is Jesus, for those that you don't know, but if you look at the history of Hebrew, if you look at the history of the naming, if you look at the history of the pagan origins of the name, you will know that his name is not Jesus. You sound a little stuffed up, Kate. You sound like a little groggy. I might be, I might have a cold. You might have a cold? You got the, you got the, no, never mind, I can't do it. I'll get banned off YouTube. I can't, I can't even make jokes on YouTube or anything, you know. I was going to do the old uh, C-19 joke, but I can't. Um, so, let us continue on with this for today. Um, how was your week? Good. Um, so it's, far, so good. What is it? You guys both look trashed. Thursday. Yeah. They just went to, they had to go to the big city. They went to the big city to get their, almost like a permanent residency down in here. And so that's where we have been attacking for the last couple of weeks, trying to get these guys. They had to make this trip like eight, nine hours away, seven or eight, nine hours away, somewhere around there on this big clanky bus. Um, and third world country buses are a little interesting. Um, the first bus they took, it looked like the... Uh, the bathroom inside of the bus had like spilled out over it into was flooding th everywhere. It flooded everywhere into the bus. The whole bus was sopped up with uh, urine all over it. Um, how was this? And the, the first bus, the guy was. It was the middle of the night, and so these guys take buses. It, it's basically a twenty-four hour trip. But they, they, they. There's no such thing as like trying to sleep on this bus. Um, I'm not saying third world country buses are worse than thir first world country buses. But I would imagine they are quite a bit. Um, but also, it costs what? What does your bus ticket cost? Fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars for a six-hour trip. It's a, I think it's seven or eight, eight, eight or nine if you're really slow, and they can go five if you're super fast. Yeah, and so <laughs> breaking every law in the speeding universe. Yeah, and so at night, you're in our country, the the where North America, you always have cops that are always sitting alongside the road all night long and things of that nature. In our country, um, whenever it rains or whenever um, they decide that they don't want to be out, they just go home. And so usually they go, everybody goes home at night. So you will see zero cops along the way. You might have a checkpoint somewhere here and there, but you can go at whatever speed you would like. And the first bus they took like a week ago, um, the guy w got there in five, four, four or five hours instead of the normal seven it was hours. So fast. Yeah, but but you're on the whole way there. You're feeling like getting really car sick and just dudes all over the road. He just and was, a certain. It way. was a double decker bus as well. Yeah, we were on top and in the we were back. They are on the top in the back and. Um, it always seems like because we are the minority, we are the white minority in this country by far. Um, in fact, I, did you guys see any any white folks along yes, the way? Yes, there's actually one on our... There's uh, one? On the way home, there's one. One guy. There's yeah, one. and so we are the minority here, and so we um, they always literally throw us to the back of the bus. They throw us right next to the restroom. Um Jade and I had it before where they, they uh, for their, all the seats were open, but they went and they sat us in the very, very back right next to the bathroom. And it was a, the door on that thing was broken. People got stuck in the bathroom. So we were helping them out for the, like the, the yeah, whole. There's no handle on the inside. We were on our bus we took yesterday. The bus to the bathroom. There's a bus because they had, the way we were on another double decker on the way home. Is that a bus to the bathroom? Or a door to the bathroom. Oh, okay. okay. A door to the bathroom and the actual bathroom door. And the downstairs thing has a door, and that door would not open. It took like. Yeah, no, everyone was working. Even I struggled getting the door open. It's like, like, it was like a group effort. Everyone on the bus stood up and was trying to rip the yeah, door. It took four people to open one of the door one time. I was able to get through it myself in like just a minute or two. Well, but, you're double the size of everybody down here. Yeah, but the white guys were sitting in front, so they were, uh, they were trying like, to open it as well. They were trying to help everyone through, but they couldn't figure it out. Because you got to spin the lock like twice one way. But it gets stuck, so you gotta like really crank it to open this door. Nice, nice. And when we say white guys, we are we are not. Um, we, we don't look at the color of people's skin at all, at, at all. We we don't care. We we love everybody the exact same. We are just the minority, and so we've learned what it's like to be the minority in this country. And you really, um, it doesn't matter who you're with. If you're the white guy in a all different colored country. You are the minority. They will throw you to the back of the bus. You will. They half the time they won't pick you up. Like if you're a white guy standing alongside the road and you're trying to pick up one of these public buses, they will literally put their finger out the window at you, shake it, and and just drive on by. Like they will push the gas as they, instead of like slowing down. In fact, we've had it where they will let a a um, a different colored skin person on 
and then they drive away without us, right? And they just they do not want us. Um, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but uh, yeah, we uh, we are definitely yeah. those guys down here. All right, anything else? Anything else exciting on your trip? Um, I don't really think there's anything too crazy. You, know, you guys are still alive. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just go there in the night, and you, you come back basically the same time the next day. It's a good thing you guys are young. I'll give you guys like another. 20 years. It's a very exhausting trip. It is a very exhausting trip, absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, and what's as exhausting for that trip was that um, the three of us that were left here and the 10 dogs, um, because of the sleeping conditions, Nicole and I were up most of the night for these two trips, these two times trips. And this is why we're all like jacked up and can barely even um, speak our name. Right, Bob? Right. Right. All right. Let's continue. Here we go. So here we go. We are on Yokonan 18, and I would like to say Eli's here, but he is extremely slow getting up in the morning, and so I will throw him under that bus since we're talking about bus rides. All right, here we go. <laughs> Eli took the slow bus ride today. Okay, so here we go. Um, Yokonan 18. Having said this, Yahushua went out in his Talmudian, with his Talmudian, beyond the Kir Kirdron torrent, where there was a garden into which he and his Talmudian entered. And Yehuda, who delivered him up, also knew the place because Yahushua often met him there with his Talmudian. Yehuda then, having received the squad and officers from the chief Kohen and Pharisees, came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. All right, so they went to get our Messiah and they had torches, weapons, and uh, torches, uh, lanterns, and weapons. And what's the difference between a, uh, I guess a torch, I guess a lantern would lantern be... A lantern like thing you hold and a torch like a thing on a stick, right? Yeah, so this is like a one of these things that um, if you're about to get, in, you know, they, when they when they talk about people, uh, the, the people coming against you, right? And they're all with their little lanterns and they're all like, this is one of these things right here. Torches, lanterns, and weapons. And it's the middle of the night as well. So this is, um, thoughts, anyone? Uh, I think they're very crazy people. I think they have so much hate for this dude, they're willing to lay... Like, Break out the entire Romanian army. Yeah, well, and I don't know if there's a Romanian army. I think this was the um, Talmudian army, not the Talmudian. I'm not, now, I don't want people to get confused. When we say Talmudian, we're talking servants of Yah. When we're talking like Talmud, we are talking about all of the oral Torah, the Babylonian mysticism, the um, great evil that breaks Deuteronomy 4 too. And so, um, anything on this? Gentlemen? Um, not really. I mean, there's people. It's just a pretty explanatory. You know, people are there. They're there to take him. Okay. Four. Yahushua then, knowing all that would come upon him, went forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Yahushua of Nazareth. Yahushua said to them, I am. And Yahuda, who delivered him up, was also standing with him. All right. We got to talk about this. It just says, I am right here. I just did a big video yesterday because we have false teacher, Paul Nissan, who has 150,000 subs between two channels. And um, I was, I had to be corrected because I, I thought he was a Trinitarian, but there's a difference. There are people that are Trinitarians and, and who are, they, they believe that the father, the son, and the Holy spirit are all that three, one. But then, um, the false teacher Paul Nissan says, I'm not a Trinitarian. I believe that Messiah and Yahuwah are the exact same one. Uh, is it the same thing? Yeah, yeah. Well, we know the Ruha Kakadesh comes from our creator, right? It's a, it's a piece of him. So I don't know what the difference is between this oneness religion and being a Trinitarian, right? He basically says that Yahuwah and Yahushua are the exact same entities. And he will go over it and over and over. And you guys should have seen the video I did yesterday because you guys were gone. But the guy makes it zero sense. He's like, you just got to believe what it says right here. And he's he, he went off on it. Now let's talk he used, about... Do you use the I am thing? He, no, he didn't use the I am thing, but everybody else uses the I am. So let's talk about this. Um, Caden, are you the son of Jason Boss? I am. Jaden, are you the son of Jason Boss? I am. Okay. Did you guys both say that you're Elohim Most High? No. I you mean, just you answered answer a, your question. Right. You answered the question. Um, and his question in verse 4 was, whom do you seek? And they said, we're seeking Yahushua of Nazareth. And he says, I am Yahushua of Nazareth. Right? He did not say he is Elohim Most High. Okay. Oh, it's good to see you, Eli. How you doing, buddy? Good. You made it out? Oh, that's good. Come out from under the bus and maybe help me drive here, will you? 
Okay. Um, so he says, I am. Now, there's another thing here. We are in... Um, Jade, you're out cold today. Mm -hmm. Maybe Eli should be tapping you on the head today like you always tap him on the head when he looks like he's sleeping. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the kids have good reason. So... Um, when he says, I am, and Yehuda who delivered him up was also standing with him. Six, when therefore he said to them, I am, they drew back and fell to the ground. Okay, did he just say he's the he's the creator and they fell to the ground when he said that? I don't, I don't understand why they fell down. Maybe they were like scared because they knew this dude. They're like, wait, this is him? This is power. This is called power. When they find out who it is, it's like, it's like whoosh. Like, whoa. Like, wow. What the? Then, you know? He's they're down to the ground. Yeah, so it was a power thing, I think, is what this was. Okay, seven. Once more he asked them, Whom do you seek? And they said, Yahushua of Nazareth. Yahushua answered, I said to you that I am. If then you seek me, allow these to go. Again, he's answering the question. Who are you seeking? Yahushua of Nazareth. He says, I am that person, right? Okay, nine. Um, in order that the word might be filled, which was spoke of those whom you have given me, I have lost none. Then Shimon Kepha, having a sword, drew it and struck the Kohen Hagdal's servant and cut off his right ear. And the servant's name was Melech. And Yahushua said to Kepha, put your sword into the sheath. You shall not drink the cup, which my father has given me. All right. Now, you guys are swordsmen, um, at least far more swordsman-y than the majority of people. And um, we play pirate down here all the time. We play pirate and we play swordsman. We do all sorts of stuff because we live in a world where you have to have a machete. You have to have a sword. Now, we've sharpened these things up. We made these things like super, super sharp. How, how sharp do you guys, or how, how sharp do you think it would have to be for him to cling swipe this guy's ear right off? I mean, there's no bone in it, so it'd be, it wouldn't be too hard. I mean, just, just a little force on the sharp machete, you just go right off. And these guys are fishermen, right? And so if there's one thing that they would know how to do is sharpen a tool. And um, that's, that's what your life in a fisherman's thing is. You know, catching the fish and then clinging the fish, you're always cutting things up. So it wouldn't take too much, but that was a quite an interesting shot, right? I mean, he wasn't aiming for his head, per se, because that would be an easy target. Maybe he did, maybe he missed. Maybe he missed, and he got their ear instead. Well, that'd be, um, yeah, I guess that would be. That'd be maybe interesting. Maybe attempted murder on his record. Maybe attempted murder. I don't know. He was nervous. What do we do? Give him, give him some credit. Okay, 12. Then the squad and the commander and the officers of the Yahudim seized Yahushua and bound him. They just completely ignored Peter's kind of dude's ear off. Um... Yeah, well, I Even mean... Even though Yahushua healed it, they just completely ignored it. This dude was swinging a sword at them. Yeah, that is true. They were just so mad at Yahushua, they forgot that they might be a danger. Well, and they all, he also healed it, right? And he also told them to resheath this. He, he told them not to attack them at all. And so, um, I'm sure they were ready for this. I mean, if Kepha would have gone too much, Kepha would have been killed. They would have killed him right there. Okay, and they led him away to Canaan first, for he was the father-in-law of Kaiva, who was Kohen and Hagdadal that year. Now, Caiapha was the one who gave counsel to the Yahudim that it was better that one man should die for the people. And there's nowhere in the Torah that says that someone should be hung on the, on the cross for the Torah. No. And Shimon Kepha followed Yahushua with another Talmud, and the Talmud was known to the Kohen in Hagdadal, and went to, with Yahushua into the courtyard of the Kohen in Hagdadal. But Kepha was standing outside the door. So the other Talmud, who was known to the Kohen in Hagdadal, went out and spoke to her who kept the door, and brought Kepha in. Then the servant girl who kept the door said to, to Kepha, Are you not one of this man's Talmudian? He said, I am not. And the servants and officers who had made a fire of coal stood there because it was cold and they warmed themselves. And Kepha was standing with them and warming himself. Then the Kohen and Hagdadal asked Yahushua about his Talmudian and his teaching. Yahushua answered him, I spoke openly to the world. I always taught in the congregation in the Mikdash where the Yahudim always meet. And I spoke <gasps> not in secret. <laughs> Hold on. Sorry, like always, we have dog incidents. Okay, so he just said, I, he, they ask him about his teachings, and he just says, I'm in the congregation, I taught openly to you, um, I didn't speak anything in secret. And he goes on, why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. See, they know what I said. And when he has, had said this, 
one of the officers who stood by slapped Yahushua in the face saying, do you answer the Kohen and hacked it all this way? Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, he did. He slapped the son of, of Yah. I wonder how he, I wonder how he, the rest of his life went. Yeah, well, I wonder how his uh, eternity is going. Yeah. Yahushua answered him, if I have spoken evilly, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why do you strike me? Then Canaan sent him bound to the Kohen and Hagdadal Caiapha. And Shimon Kepha <coughs> excuse me, was standing and warming himself. Then they said to him, Are you also one of his Talmudian? He denied it and said, I am not. This is like where the first gospel actually separates this Kepha's uh, denial. Because usually they all do all one, two, three, right in a row. But this one is like he went back to Yoshua, then one came back to Kepha. Yeah, and this was an event, right? This wasn't a one-time thing. This was an all-night thing. And then before the, the dawn hit and the, the rooster crowed, this happened. Okay, 26. One of the servants of the Kohen and Haggadol, a relative of one, of the one whose ear, whose ear Kepha cut off, said, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Then Kepha again denied it, and immediately a cock crowed. And then they led Yahushua from Caiapha to the palace, and it was early. And they themselves did not go into the palace, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Pesach. So they're worried about being defiled to eat the Pesach, but yet they just bore false witness, and they, did, they broke a whole bunch of other commandments. I mean, by default, um, you break one command, you break them all. So they are already defiled um, in terms of being ready for that, the Pesach. I don't, know, I don't know why these are worried, man. They're creating a bigger sin than that. Yeah. They're about to commit murder. Yeah, and bearing false witness, I mean, and striking somebody, I mean, uh, like striking the son of Yah. Hmm. Okay, 29. Pilatus, therefore, came out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, if he were not an evildoer, we would have not delivered him up to you. Then Pilatus said to them, You take him and judge him according to your law. The Yahudim said to him, It is not right for us to put anyone to death. That's also wrong. Yeah. What? Although that was under certain circumstances. Yeah, and so why are, what do they mean that it is not right for them to put anyone to death? What are they talking about? Here they, they want to put Yosha to death, but they want Pilate and Pilatus to do it. They want, like, why? The, why, though? No, their hands clean. But why else? Uh, because it's not you're supposed to kill him differently. You're supposed to kill him with stone instead of hanging him on a tree. Anything else you guys can think of? Um, I don't know what I'm missing here. They are under Roman occupation, right? The laws of their land are completely different, right? The laws of, of what they are supposed to be doing. Because they are under occupation and the Romans have them, right? Um, the Romans have control of this. And so... Um, as far as them putting people to death, they're under Roman law at the moment, right? This is this is what I believe. Okay. It is not right for us to put anyone to death in order that the word of Yahushua might be filled, which he spoke, signifying by what death he was about to die. Then Pilatus went back into the palace and called Yahushua and said to him, You are the sovereign of the Yahudim? Yahushua answered him, You say this from yourself, or did others talk to you about me? Pilatus answered, Am I Yahudi? Your own nation and chief Kohenim have delivered you to me. What did you do? Yahushua answered, My reign is not of this world. If my reign were of this world, my servants would fight, so that I should not be delivered to the Yahudim. But now, my reign is not from here. Then Pilatus said to him, You are a sovereign then? Yahushua answered, You say it, because I am a sovereign. For this I was born, and for this I have come into the world that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Then Pilatus said to him, What is truth? And when he said this, he went out to the Yehudim and said to them, I find no guilt in him. What do you guys think of that he said this? Did you, he just say this as he's walking out? Messiah just goes, um, you know, about the truth. And he looks at him and goes, what is truth? And then he like turns around or does he wait for an answer? Uh, uh, I, don't know, I, th I think Pilatus probably just thinks he's like mentally ill. Right? He's like saying he's king, but he doesn't understand that he's not king of this earth. Like, you're, what do you mean you're king? You're, you're a guy that's born to a carpenter. He's like, you're, you're from a poor household. He's like, how are you king? So he probably just thinks he's crazy. That guy guys has done nothing wrong. He's just a little crazy. Hmm. Interesting. Anyone else have anything? I don't. All right, 39. Um... Okay, Pilatus said to him, what is truth? And when he said this, he went out again to the Yehudim and said to them, I find no guilt in him. But you have a custom that I shall release someone to you at the Pesach. Do you want then that I release to you the sovereign 
of the Yahudim. And they all shadowed it again, saying, Not this one, but Baraba. And Baraba was a robber. So it's like, this must be more Talmudic stuff. Like, release a, like, prisoner's lane at the feast of, like, Pesach. This has to be Talmudic stuff. Yeah, there's... there's uh, no, you know, prisoners either. They were supposed to have prisoners like this. Yeah. I mean, this dude was robbing. What was... There was a punishment for... He was also a murder, though, too. We knew... We yeah, knew. I think one of them was a murder. stone to take outside the gate. Yeah, I don't think... See, he's sticking the prison... But the you, you guys understand, we're, we're under Roman law now, right. right? And so the stuff that they would normally do, if this guy was a killer... They would take him outside this, the city gates and pick up rocks and kill him and and take care of that as it would. But they are under other stuff. All right, gentlemen, I guess that is it. Um, tomorrow is a preparation day for everybody out there. Um, should we do a drum roll for preparation day? Yeah. All right, and I guess we should do a drum roll because we made it through another thing of John. Yeah. All right, and we survived. And so, yes, and um, that was that was for the grand. We, we love you, Graham. And uh, we know you, we know you're so good with our drum rolls, and uh, <laughs> you're the only one who is. So we love you. Uh, we love every single one of you guys out there. To all our family, to all our friends, to everybody who hates us, we still love you guys. We hope you guys have a wonderful day. We hope you guys are seeking our Creator, where He is able to be found. That you're seeking His Son, and that your faith is there, and that you are seeking this Kingdom Road. And the Kingdom Road is found by keeping the laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator. Thank you guys very much. Have a wonderful day. All right. Shalom. shalom.